Welcome to my workshop. I'm going to attempt on this video to present and demonstrate some basic tools that I hope will be of some use to you in the pursuit of music. Whether you use this in the making of your own music or simply with the intent of bettering your understanding of the process of making music. I'm going to start out by presenting you with some very basic principles that I've been using in endlessly different ways since the early 70s when I came across these ideas from L. Ron Hubbard's researches into the field of study. Let's begin with the definition of two very simple words. First, the word gradient. Gradient is a gradual approach to something, taken step by step, level by level, each step or level being, of itself, easily surmountable, so that finally quite complicated and difficult activities can be achieved with relative ease. The other word used in conjunction with gradient is the word win. A win is intending to do something and doing it are intending not to do something and not doing it. So you see, in studying and practicing, you have to grab onto the idea that you're the one who's got to know when you've succeeded at something you set out to do, even to the detail of playing a short scale smoothly. So here's the sequence. The first thing is you intend to do something, choosing a step or a level that is able to be accomplished by you, maybe by finding the right tempo, slowing the tempo down, or a small enough chunk of the piece, you know, and just enough so that you can easily approach it. And then you go at it until you have a win or you succeed and, and you've accomplished what you set out to do and you acknowledge that. You say, okay, I got that. And you go on to the next chunk. And level by level, bit by bit, you find that you can handle more and more. Taking on too much at once can cause you to be frustrated and gives you losses. You feel like you're not making it. Whereas taking on too little can just be boring. So judging how to take on just the right amount is a sensitive and important judgment uh, in studying and practicing. Oops. Okay, that's a little fast now, especially getting into this fifth bar. Uh, fingering here, now let's see. take those first two lines a little slower. Oops. Uh, what's happening? transition from this bar to that bar. I goof up right in here. Let me look at the left hand now. Two, fingering is two, three. Okay, let's see now. left hand here a little slower and the right hand together a little slower I think again slow it down. Good, except for the last part. Again. One more 
time, that's getting better. Oops. I'm going to slow it down even more. That felt better. See if I can put the second four bars together, which are the hardest for me right now. Up oh, again. Ah, uh, fingering there. That's what's goofing me up. I end on the thumb, and then I got no place to go after that. So that's got to be three, two. Three, two. better but one more time wow that's pretty good let me try it one more time Let's apply some of these uh, practicing techniques that we were talking about to um, these little pieces called children's songs. Um, here's one, number 16, that has a passage at the beginning that has a, has a real rhythmic independence between the right hand and the left hand, and it takes some coordinating. So let me find the right tempo and the right chunk and see if we can't get these 4, 8, 12, 16 bars to sound like something. The right hand all the way through it is simply a, a recurring beat. And the left hand is a, is a rhythm against it. Fingering there. And put a five on there. That's the left hand part. So let me see if this is the right tempo. I guess I knew that better than I thought. Let me try it a little, a little faster. problem there. I better go to four here so I can play those next notes. That might be awkward, but I think a thumb there is good. And then a four there. Let's see. Here we go. feels a little awkward to me. I'm going to slow it down. Uh, that's it, right in there. That little chunk is a little tricky, so let me slow that down again. I'm going to make a loop out of this just to get it real settled in my hands. That worked out okay. Now with playing, I find that most musicians want to play with a flow. 
That means with an uninterrupted motion. The things which add up to this are control, intention demonstrated, and uninterrupted motion. And it is possible to achieve this with practice. It's the only way I know of. First thing you have to recognize is that there are certain glitches, for lack of a better word, we'll use the word glitch, which comes in and interrupts the flow. And assuming that you're really there doing what you're doing, these glitches or interruptions only stem from the body or from the mind. Now, forgetting about where they come from or why, which could lead down a lot of side roads, and it's really a study all in itself, these glitches can be eliminated by just noticing them and going on. It's really just that simple, but you've got to be awake and alert. Uh, so here's the two steps to eliminate the glitches. First thing is you imagine the flow of motion you want to make. You've got to kind of get it in the mind what this flow is. And then you start the flow slowly at first and just notice all the glitches as they come up. You don't analyze them. You just notice them and you keep on flowing. Just keep doing these two steps and see the motion smooth out and keep on flowing. Just see the motion flow more and more without interruption. Let me take a piece here, just a segment of, uh, uh, of a piece called Yellow Nimbus, and it's a, it's a right-hand tricky little thing. And let's see if I can't uh, find some glitches in here and smooth them out. Um, let's see, I'll take it from about here to about there. Let's see. There's the first glitch right there. Okay, I gotta, I'm going to slow the tempo down and, and just eliminate these glitches from this part. I'm going to start with just the right hand and do these four bars. There's a little glitch at the end that you maybe couldn't hear, but it's actually there. One more time. time. That was better. Now the left hand is doing a thing. Both together. Oops. Now I got to coordinate them a little slower. There was a glitch right in the left hand there. Right, right at the very end there. That's better. Better. That was better. Now I'm going to continue on to that last little bit. This one glitch has my thumb turned. Okay, now I'm going to imagine that motion just flowing, and I'm going to try and do it and see if there are any more glitches right in that six bars. Glitchless. Like you just saw, there was a particular thing I was going for while I was practicing that little bit there. And uh, I thought it worth mentioning that uh, when you set out to practice, uh, you ought to set a goal for yourself, like have a particular intent about what you want to accomplish, whether it's just like a little phrase, like what I just did, or, or a longer thing. Just so that you know what you're going for, it kind of keeps you on the road. Thought I'd just drop that in for you. I thought it might be fun to, uh, to look at a practice technique that I use sometimes. And um, it kind of gets me real separate from my hands. Because what we do, you remember we talked about a flow, establishing a flow. Well, the idea of this is to keep a regular, a regular flow of quavers, notes going, uh, uh, kind of without interruption, and, and just, uh, and just move, uh, move around the piano, but, but weave the line with two hands, rather than play a line with one hand. <laughs> Use 
two hands. And you can get into uh, the idea of thinking of, uh, you got these ten guys here, uh, uh, each one kind of like a drummer, uh, and do, do his thing. Like you have these two drummers do this, and you have these three drummers do this, and you get like a five, say five. And then you can change from five to four. these guys coordinated start down here and see if I can get that one all the way up. It's just patterns. You just start a pattern two and three, say. This is a two and three pattern. Two in that hand, three in this hand. Or, or three and three. Let's take a look at a standard song now. Here, here's a piece called Easy to Love by Cole Porter. And uh, I've got it in my mind. I've heard it a lot. Uh, I've never performed it myself. Um, here's, a, here's a brief lead sheet of it. Uh, let's look through it and see if I can't put uh, a sound together on Easy to Love. Yeah. they have written there. There. Okay. That's better. That's it. that's written there. spreads out, starts there, and then it goes that way. So let's see. I like uh, to hear those two notes, stark naked, and then some sound in, in the middle. Let me try it again. that raised five sound. I wonder if there's a passing chord in there. Um, probably an A of some kind. Could do that. 
yet, but I'll keep it standard for, to, for now. That's okay, a minor chord is fine. The little, the little uh, inner voice helps, helps move, uh, move it for me. I hear that passing note, I don't see it written, so... to the E rather than play the C. That's the standard thing. I kind of like that. I think I'll keep that. It's a little unusual. I think it'd be a good idea to uh, extract one principle, one little bit out of what I just did with Mood Indigo and kind of describe it a little bit, break it down a little bit. And I thought that, that, uh, that one thought process that goes on is the idea of how to render a melody and what that's got to do with rhythm in it. Like, for instance, if I just played the straight rhythm of these first four bars of Mood Indigo, without any contrasting rhythm, just straight, it would very dryly sound like this. Okay? So that's, that's one rhythm. It's the rhythm of the melody. Now, I suggest that what happens is uh, uh, you can put rhythms in various rhythmic contexts. Like, for instance, if you think of what the drums does, what a drummer might do underneath this, and if he's just playing a, say, a, a slow swing beat that goes like this, then if you keep that as an imagination in your mind and then play it and play with that rhythm that you're imagining, and it might come out like this. a sudden that has a little bit more life to it and then and then keeping that basic rhythm the melody can then start to be embellished upon by adding other rhythms there's a little 
double rhythm that goes on there while this goes on. If you can imagine that going on. Mm. All the time that, that melodic phrasing is being done, in the mind there's this basic rhythm so that you've got a kind of counterpoint of rhythm going on. You've got the basic rhythm and then you get what the melody's doing. Maybe that's helpful. The blues is a universal communication. got a kind of an expression in it that it's kind of immediately recognizable also just the way it feels like as if you could put words to it all the time. Everybody knows the progression, so it's not a big shock. And you know I'm going to do... And now you know I'm going to do... saxophone, I could play that lick real good. Could put lyrics to that. kind of thing too. of music. Let's blow apart some of these mystiques that have come into being about the act of composing music. There's nothing particularly mysterious about creation. The word just means to make or to cause to happen, to construct. 
Everyone does it all the time. You could say composing is the act of constructing a piece of music. So let's start again with the simplest of guidelines, because if these decisions aren't made that we're going to talk about here, the result could be a lot of wandering around. So let's consider these three steps. The first one is decide what you want to compose. You just get an idea of exactly what you're going for. The next thing is, is you decide the physical form you want it in, whether on a piece of manuscript paper, whether memorized in your mind, whether a full score. You decide the, the physical result. And I think you'll find that the clearer you are about what you want and the result that you're going for, the easier things will go. The last and third part is just you go straight ahead and you do it without inter any interruptions. Let me show you quickly what I mean. This piece I could possibly play with a trio, or maybe piano solo, uh, or with a duet. But uh, as the piece develops, I'll, I'll redo that part of uh, the intention. I'm, I'm going to start out with uh, finding a, a mood and, a, and kind of a vamp of, of uh, sound and some little melody that goes over it. So let me get a tempo going here first. Yeah. That'll do. I better I better jot better jot that down so I won't forget it. Okay, that's enough to remember. Second bar and body, that daddy, that daddy. change on that part. So I'll get the B, the B minor chord, and then the A minor chord, and then back to the B minor chord, and then make some sort of a change after that. Let me try it again. that like a melodic passage might be nice <laughs> Thank you. 
progression, but I forgot the melody. Let me see. I should have written that down. Set to something. I can just write that much down and remember that it goes through the changes. that transition smooth. the bridge one more time and I think we got a basic uh, a basic little format going here we got a first part with the B minor second part with the A minor then back to the B minor and then this little sort of transitional thing you could call it a bridge I guess and then back to the top again Let's have the intent of uh, using this piece with the trio later on, with bass and drums. And now I'm going to kind of get into it and, and uh, develop some line playing and some ways to get through the form to make it feel good. So let me see what we got here. The sound of this chord makes a scale like, like that sound better than a scale like this. Although, depends on how it's used. I'm going to try and make a scale like this. Let's see, what was, the, what was that melody I had? Uh, something like that. 
Something that where the where the the note lands on the one with a little phrase that goes up. That one there, and then the note will land on on this for the second chord. So that for the first chord, this for the second chord. Let me try that. out of the B minor into the A minor. Now I need a phrase to get back into the B minor. Something like that. Uh, I don't like that note. Um, let me try that. I like that better. rather than the triads. okay. I think it's ready for the trio now. Here's a tune I put together and um, let's, let's rehearse it. Have a look at it. I'll play a little bit of it for you first. Started out with just this little thing. Let me see. That's, that's kind of like the basic, the basic rhythm. Kind of Latin-y, but but light and tippy, you know, like you were playing on the on the ride cymbal. Yeah. Then it goes to A minor. top again. So it's just like B minor, A minor, B minor, the little bridge, mm -hmm. and back up That's the top. Okay. The only other uh, thought that I had about this rhythmically was that was that the, the B minor, A minor, B minor part could be like all, all Latin feel, latin -y kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And then when we hit the little bridge, let's try, just, just to see how it feels to try some 4-4 four -four in there. Okay. Swing. Yeah, swing. Swing. Bring us back around uh, four bars back to the top. Um, and then I, I didn't write any kind of I didn't write any kind of bass line, so just uh, wide open to invent something. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's try it. Okay. I'm just gonna. I don't have a melody for the first part. I'm just gonna play the uh, the, the pad. And uh, let's just play it around to get an idea of the form. Okay. One, two, uh,
I got one suggestion in the in the bridge part. Um, there's two two things to try and grab, Tommy. That that on the second bar, that that last G, the one that goes. That one there, and then uh, and then the very last lick of the bridge. Let's 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 see if it sounds all right to play da 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 da. I like that. To go to take the turnaround back to the top. Yeah. Okay. Let's try right on the bridge. Okay. Yeah. I just had an idea. You want to try by on instead of uh, what we were doing? Uh... Yeah, we could try. Because it might sit better with the piano okay. figure. Okay. What's the bayon? What do you mean? It's bunk to go, bunk to go, uh uh. Instead of, instead of what? Instead well, of. Well, I was doing this beat underneath his pattern, which is. Go ahead. Two, three. You know the the bayon the bayon beat uh, is is better as a basic I think as a yeah. as a basic thing and then that that's a great variation. Yeah, the only thing to about, kick it, you know. The the only thing about it is his bass drum is hitting a sixteenth note apart from your second hit because you're going one end da 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 bam and he's mm -hmm. going one dum bam. Uh huh. So oh, that's yeah, okay. why. So well, what if I change this? If you if you stagger it, if you stagger it. There you go. That's too heavy now. I, th yeah, I think yeah. it's better if we just do by own. By own, by own probably better. Yeah, but play that other beat you were playing. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was kind of sparkly. If you could maybe change one thing about it, play that other one. The by own works. Okay. Now, let's just check the other one. Two, three. Sorry, sorry. Again. It's nice. I know what you mean. There's a there's a note that goes yeah, da da. It, well, I, I'm 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 hitting that with the snare drum though. Well, it's hear, too much me, too much on the bottom. To me, it's too a little too dusty. I mean, it gets cluttered. Let me hear just bit. let me hear just the drums and the piano part. Right. Two, two three, four. Either do one or the other. That, that's nice. If I do that and we both play the uh, the by, the uh, sango or whatever, that works. Yeah. It's either one or the other. Because if I play by own, he plays that one. It sounds kind of. That was nice what you just did. Well, let's do that one then. Okay. So now now let me hear the other one. The, fr okay. the first one. One, okay. two, three. Definitely grooves harder. Yeah, I think the bio oh, is better. I like, that grooves harder. Use that as a basic, and then if you jump into that other thing, you we'll can. We'll look at each other maybe later have on. A, and have yeah. a variation yeah. on it. Okay. I tell you what, blowing. let's try. Let's try this thing from. Um, let's take uh, one chorus of the drum solo part where we leave out that last four bars for you. Start there on the drum solo, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then take one chorus of the melody uh, with the bione beat, and then. Uh, after one course of the melody, we stay on the vamp, B minor, A minor, develop that for a while to an ending. Okay? okay. Right on the break. One, two, three, four.
nice to, to, to leave it back like that. Let's do that, just right on the B minor. Da, da, da. Okay. Right at just the last B minor part. One, two, three, four. Yeah, try that. One, two, three, four. That's cool. So uh, let's run it one more time through um, with a uh, couple of choruses each for bass and drums and uh, that little ending we worked out. Okay? A uh, one, two, three. Uh.
Yo. Well, that was quite an adventure for me. I hope some of this proves helpful to you in some way. And I do have a thought I'd like to leave you with. I believe that each one of us is basically responsible for the condition we're in. Whatever abilities or lack of abilities we find we have, we've had a definite hand in bringing that condition about. And we can change it. Each of us has the power to make things happen. And we're the only ones that can truly cause improvements with ourselves and with music and with our lives. So when you decide to study, when you decide to expand and improve, take one thing at a time, accomplish what you set out to do, set out to do things that you can accomplish and win at. Get all distractions and counterintentions out of your way and go ahead and win. I know you can. What else is there to do anyway? I'll see you later.